For this week's episode, we're going to do a preview of two Patreon shows. The first one is called Hippo Happy Hour. Hippo Happy Hour is a show that B-Word and Jake show up to Sal's Tavern to have a couple of waters and a great conversation. Let's go ahead and get started with that right now. Hey, Sal. Good afternoon, B-Word. Where is Jake the Hater? Yeah, Jake should be here soon. Can you do me a favor, pour me a couple waters real quick? Certainly. I love water. Jake does love water. What's up, Sal? What's going on, dude? I like water. I like water in my holes. Yeah. Water in my holes. Like, water. Like, you know what's funny is when you say I want water in, it sounds like watering. That's true. I I like water in my holes. Right. Because I like the water in my holes, but I like to water in my holes. When you were a kid... Did you ever go to like a, either a splash park or something like that where it had spray water and you would just like spray your butthole? Oh, yeah. Dude, I, all right. Secret about me, I used to hump the jet at the public pool in Pahrump. Did you really? Oh, yeah, dude. Like when I was a little boy and found out what a boner was, I would sit in front of the jet. Like I would swim and I would act like, you know, when you swam up to the side, you'd be talking to like your friends or your mom or something. I would purposely make sure my crotch was right on a jet because I loved feeling that <laughs> that's interesting that's interesting <laughs> you didn't do that no i don't think i ever did that i did finger the shit out of out of those holes though before well, i see that's the problem okay see so you why would you finger it when your penis feels so much better because i, I, I guess I, I didn't put my penis in the hole i just had it i guess like, i just never swam it. past it enough to go oh that feels good like it was always oh, just did. like blowing air into the water and you just like go Put your palm over it, and you're just like, oh, that's interesting. I think the Sandlot ruined me because I love the feeling of a wet bathing suit, like titties under a wet bathing suit, like laying against it. It's so nice. Oh, laying against it. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Windy like if you're pep- going to – Pepper corn. Pepper corn. Pepper, if, pepper, pepper I was thinking corn. you were you were going to talk about like reaching under a wet bathing suit to grab a booby. Like no, that is the no. worst. That is no, the worst. That's because like, it's like that – it's cold hot. No, it's it's just cold, but it's like cold hot. It's like trying to reach into a balloon and navigate. Well, that is. I'm saying laying on it's like cold hot. Oh, okay, yeah, th- that's fine. That's fine. That's it's just caught, or is it caught, or is it or is it hold? It could be no, hold. It's caught. I wouldn't want it to be hold because that just sounds like you're holding the boobs. Like I like caught because you can lay on it. Oh, that makes sense. Like boobies are like boobies and subies are like pillows unless they're fake, which you've said is hard to fuck. It is. It is. But it doesn't depreciate the value of, of a booby. So if you built one of those robot fucking women, right? Mm-hmm. Are you where are you giving her her enhancements? Are you are you doing like I understand like everybody's gonna probably do all over, but like you had a choice where you can only build her ass out or her boobs out, which one? Ass. One hundred percent ass. As a matter of fact, this last weekend, dude, I ended up going to a a, a beer fest type thing. It was a um, I don't remember what it was called specifically, but but ultimately beer fest. It, well, it wasn't beer fest, but but it's it's like a can fest more or less, where you you're given a little cup and you have to go to all these little huts. And, and I've been and to one they, of those. You jerk off in them, right? No, not at all. Sorry, not at all. Wrong cup. Wrong, wrong cup. cup wrong cup. That might have been with two girls. But uh, long story short, it, one of the cool things about this was you know you get to see everybody around town, and I found a new ass in town. That was just beautiful. And it was one of those ones that you just wanted to follow. Like, you would follow this ass into the depths of hell. And, like, I never saw the face. I never saw the front. I couldn't tell you anything about the front. It may have been a man, but I followed the ass. And it was a beautiful ass. It was the best ass there, for sure. I, I've followed an ass before. I've followed, I've followed an ass driving before. Like, I've purposely mm-hmm. went out of way during blocks to follow a good, a good tush. Have you well, ever done that? Yes, and we actually, you know, we talk on the phone almost every single day. And right. while some of it's for pleasure and, and, you know, some of it's just for, for arguing, more than likely, like, at least two or three times in these conversations will we find, oh, god damn, look at that ass. And then both of us well, are, typically, like, this is what happens. hearing about We're it. We're talking, and when you're not doing a Starbucks order with your mm-hmm. 7 Stevia or some other bullshit, it's, whoa, look at the ass on that. And yeah. then all I'm doing is going... 
why can't we FaceTime? Like, why can't I see this? And then you just describe it to me. And yeah. I'll say this. I think your descriptions are way better than mine because yours are like, what is it like? I'm like, it's nice. And like, that's the end of the sentence. And yours is like, oh, it's got this and it's got that. And like, you're like a thesaurus of butt. A thesaurus of butt. You know, the, li- the lately I've really just been like, oh, that's an excellent turd cutter. Like, it's just been one of those things. Just a very simple, accurate method of describing a butt. Well, tur- turd cutter is a good one. Like, like, it, are there sayings that like, like I fell down this rabbit hole the other day of like an old dude like doing southern grandpa sayings. Like my brother's one of those. Like I wouldn't kick her out of bed for eating crackers. Is there like some that just fucking bother you? You talk about coyote ugly, right? And like you got to chew your arm off. Like that's obviously one of them in that vein. Um, I think yeah, I wouldn't kick her out of bed for X, Y, and Z. That's the same thing. Um, and probably the, the most interesting one is I'd, I'd suck a fart out of her ass and hold it in like a bong hit to understand what she ate two weeks ago. That's way too long. That's, That's way too long. Like, is there somebody's? Is there somebody that you would suck a fart out of their ass and hold it in like a bong no. hit that's not your wife? I heard my wife fart for the first time ever, though, in seven years yesterday. Really? Yeah. Was it a poof it was or was it a rumble? It was a... Oh, it was a go And I rolled over and I woke her up to tell her. <laughs> and she goes, and this is all she does. She goes, well, it finally happened. Everybody poops. And she rolled back over and went to sleep. You woke her up to tell her that you heard her yeah, fart? because it's never happened in our relationship. It never happened. I was very proud of this moment. It wow. Really so, so do you guys not, like, share the bathroom when you guys are pooping? I have that closet toilet. Okay. So, like, like my, well, you've been in my bathroom. Yeah. It's big. So, like, but it's very you private. can't put the door open and, like, continue to shit? Why would I? There's a door. I'm going to close it. Because you could leave the door open and converse. Why would I leave the door open when I'm shitting? Because like, this is what, what couples do, dude. Like, no, you know. no, we don't. Oh, okay. No. I, see, I remember, 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 remember growing up. I didn't have doorknobs, so I am like privileged now to own doorknobs in my own house. Oh, so yeah, I like true. to close doors. Remember? That's true. That's I didn't true. grow up with that. See, I had a girlfriend once who was like very open about like bodily functions. So when I would be like taking a shit, she would walk into the bathroom to come and brush her teeth, which I thought was the most iron, uh, like ironic time to brush your teeth when I'm smelling like this foul odor of, you know, human decay coming out of my ass. And you decide, oh, let's open my mouth and brush my teeth with it. Like that's just a really huh. odd time to brush your teeth. That's why I have a closet toilet. Well, yeah, yeah, probably. But, I pee with the door open, but I don't poop with the door open. Yeah, yeah. Would you poop with the door open with me? Probably. I don't see any reason why I wouldn't. I would just to make your dad mad again. I actually, that's the person that that's out of so all of funny. us. I want to poop with. I want to poop with the door open with your dad. Then. So to put that into perspective, <laughs> as weird as that sounds, <laughs> I had a I had a birthday party. What were we? We were fifteen, something like that. And I, I had a birthday party, and uh, you were there. All the bleach bros, yeah, were all there. the bleach yeah. bros were there. Uh, Poochie. was Poochie there? No, no, no. That was, was no, no, no. It was Nick. It was Hurl. Well, it was Hurl Oompa. was Oompa was there. But I didn't Poochie have Poochie was there, there too. Poochie didn't stay the night. Poochie just came over for a minute because oh, okay. he was with one of the girls. Oh, okay, gotcha. And then uh, you you snuck into the master master bathroom and you blew it up. And to this day, that's exactly how my dad knows you. Is by the flavor of your ass on that on that occasion. I wonder if he brushed. He went in to brush his teeth. And he may have. <laughs> he may that have. and then the nematodes. Nematodes. Where I, I came over and ate pizza in Carson City, and I wouldn't shut up talking about nematodes, and I just mm-hmm. tried to annoy the shit out of him. Yep, that was funny. And then he he ended up calling Nick Wake and Shake because back in the day, we we all used to kind of try to spike our hair a little bit, and so he would put hair gel in, and I want to say hairspray. At the same time, to get this like very thick, uh, spiky hair, and so my dad called him Wake and Shake for a long time. I thought that, that was pretty interesting. Uh, do you have Do you have nicknames for people like just generic? Oh, that's nicknames all I do for, for everybody. That's all I do. I got in trouble in high school because of the baseball team. I gave everybody nicknames, and we called Jesse Johnson Sloppy Seconds. Oh, and when the coach asked us what it meant, we said, "Oh, because he steals second base all the time." But he until somebody's sloppily. mom in the crowd yelled at us for doing that we also had another one because butt gizzard the famous guy we've talked mm. about on the show before uh we used to yell jerky for hot chicks mm. and leather for ugly chicks because mm. butt gizzard would be at the end of the bench chewing his leather glove the whole game mm-hmm. and somebody on the team was like man he dates the ugliest girls and at the time i was sort of dating some hot betties and i always had beef jerky and so 
one day they were walking by and everybody went, oh man, if you see an ugly one, you yell out leather. And we go, leather! Just like, because Butt Gizzard would do that. And if we saw hot ones, we said jerky. But no, I um, I give nicknames to everybody. Like your B-word, my kids all have a nickname. I, I, I'm I, I'm from a family of nicknames. My, my grandpa calls my mom Turtle. That's what she's known as. Like, so I, I'm all about like regular nicknames and, and being clever about it though. Like finding a reason to give somebody a nickname is enjoyable. Have you ever given a nickname to like a work group at work? Like that yeah. that that was publicly shared. So for instance, I was actually in a training group one time and we were there's probably like six or seven of us that were in the group and we were told that we had to come up with a name for the group. Well, there was an Asian dude who was in the group and his name was Steve which is a really weird name for an Asian dude, but regardless. And then somehow there was a running gag that um, I was Ginger from Gilligan's Island. And so the team name ended up becoming Ginger and the Asian guy. And, like, they had to run it through HR and the whole works just to make sure that they could print it on our certificates at the end of, at the, end of uh, the training. I just thought that that was really weird. Because it was something where I didn't understand, like, offensive stuff at that point in time in my yeah. life. Like, where people would get offended by Ginger and or the Asian guy. And it was just, it was it was awkward. Yeah, we, we I've done that. We had one when I was working for another company and we had to come up with the rock names, right? Yeah. Uh, because they were doing, you know, those promotions that corporations like to do. Like, hey, let's all be like, like Motley Crue and you're, you're going to get your crew together. And we were Lenny and the hand jobs. And we got banned, and then they they called us the Motley Crews, and mm. they changed our name because and our our whole slogan was Lenny was the team leader, and we were all the guys moving the hand trucks. That was our excuse, mm. which didn't go over well. So yes, no, I've I've done the nickname things for groups, and it's been public, and usually all mine are banned. I think people can understand that after listening to me talk on this show, right? Um, they're usually inappropriate. Hey Sal, can you get us another cup of waters? Certainly. So what's the most interesting fantasy football name that you've had? Um, I used to have one called Off in the Shower. And the reason was is if uh, we made it so it did public on Twitter and Facebook. So every week I had a shitty team. If I lost, it would post Jesse whatever's team just beat off in the shower. <laughs> And so everybody for the year got tagged as beating off in the shower, and I did that on purpose. The other one was um, I had one called Your Mom Smells Like Mike Trout, or Your Mom's Vag Smells Like Mike Trout, and Yahoo actually banned that name. Oh, uh, So those are my top two favorite. That's awesome. I my, Probably the one running one that I did for a long time was Show Me Your TDs, and that was never banned, but that, that seems kind of you know, kind of vanilla nowadays. But I had, uh, I had, um, all of the Desbians with Des Bryant. Okay. So I had the Desbians. I had for a, a Gronk spiked your mom. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you appreciate when people come up with unique, like clever names in fantasy? Or, I do, or? but like you, I hate when they use it over and over every year. Like I changed mine every year and I uh, hated it when we were in a league together and it was like, Oh, B word six straight years. Show me your TDs. Like get yep. fucking clever. Like, cause it just looks lazy to me. It's like, it was like lazy. there's also the ones that, yeah, but there's also the ones like tight end, you know what I mean? Or oh, like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I I, I like because I always try to get it with uh, just like people like you did the Des the Desbians right where it's mm-hmm. a, a, a player's name or a team's name or something. I also always had a rule that I would in, um, in at least in fantasy baseball, I would always draft the guy with the weirdest name. So one year I got a guy named Golden Dick. Okay, and I drafted him. He was one of the worst players ever, but I drafted him just because of his name. Okay, okay. Now is, has there been a a team or a player that has like completely sold it for you for fantasy football, meaning that you just absolutely fucking thrive that year. Lamar Jackson. Really? I got, I got Lamar Jackson like the year he was like killing it and I like picked him and nobody else really wanted him. They thought he was going to be brittle and dude, he just destroyed, like he just killed it for me for the full year. It was awesome. Really? See, mine was Peyton Manning that year that Peyton Manning went off. I had him that year, and that that actually just won me some absolute money. I was so stoked about that. If you could fantasy draft porn stars, which porn star are you picking first? You know what, dude? I like obviously like Riley Reed is like a big name now, and so is you know a few others. But I think if I would have to choose one based on longevity, and also be based on just their body of work, I'd probably have to go with Jenna Jameson. 
Jen Jameson's up there, yeah. I don't know. I, I've realized, like, I've, we've talked about it where I, I jerk off to appropriate porn, right? Like, it's, like, like natural. Like, I don't go for, like, the all. But I'm picking Shyla Styles. Okay. Like, that's just, like, an absolute bomb, bombshell, blonde bombshell that's, like, overly, like, worked everywhere. Lips, tits, ass, everything. So mm-hmm. I'm going for the extreme, the extreme, like, the Bo Jackson of porn. The Bo Jackson of porn, where she can be successful not only, like, running it back, but she can also get you a grand slam. She could break a giant bat over her head. Fantastic. (laughs) Fantastic. Well, Sal, I think we're going to go ahead and end on that. And, uh, Jake, I bought last month, so this one's for you. Fuck you, I'm out. And that, folks, was just a taste of Hippo Happy Hour. And now, a free preview of the Stain Remover. You're listening to... What am I listening to? The Stain Remover. It's not a stain, it's a racing strike. On Salty Hippo Radio. K-Salt. B-Word. And Jake the Hater. Welcome into the Stand Rover. This is B Word here at K Salt Studios, uh, here in the luscious land of fuckisms. I don't really know what's going on here, but I am here with my fuck host, isms. Jake the fuck Hater. Isms. Jake the Hater, how are you tonight, but my dude? I have the perfect radio voice. I don't know why you still work here. They should fire you and just give me the show. Look at this guy. I am like the most impeccable, impeccable host that this studio has ever had they are lucky to have me wow seriously dude uh fuck janice fuck you i think i am the greatest thing to happen to case already i'm gonna go out on a and why do you think that you're the greatest thing to happen to case already listen to me listen to me L- listen to these fuckisms coming out right now wow like how how many fuckisms can you come up with in a show i didn't even know that was a word well i obviously came up with the word fuckism so i am the grand poobah of fuckism so fuck you what's a poobah i don't know i heard it on the flintstones one time it's on the flintstones yeah they said the grand poobah of something do you like the flintstones or the jetsons i think i'd go with flintstones over jetsons why because i think betty's a fucking betty she's so hot i made you smile i want the robot the maid robot oh okay Okay, I, I want to see, see the suction traction that thing has. Plus, she has got those claw hands that just is like girth grip. I like yeah. girth grip. Girth grip. Like okay. just the yeah, girth grip. Girth That's grip. a fuckism. That is a fuckism. That is a fuckism. We have a uh, pretty packed show today. Uh, I've got a surprise guest that we're going to go ahead and interview. Um, packed like your anus. I'm, yeah, I'm not even going to tell you who the surprise guest is because uh, I have a, a – hopefully that will turn out to be pretty good. Uh, we've got uh, actually a game, something about a game. On, so we'll, we'll find out more from Janice on that. We've also got our uh, – or your over-the-line segment in my discharge of the month. So uh, I guess we have to talk about time. Time and weather. So let's talk about time and weather. The time is 4.38 p.m. And the weather is humid and balmy. Like your ball sack. Like my ball sack. How, what, if you could put like a gauge down there, how humid, what do you think the percentage of humidity is in your cross? 75. 75%? Yeah, it's not sopping wet, but it's close. Do you feel like when you shave, it changes? No. Like, you know, like a forest when you have trees or a desert, like how the wind can blow differently and the temperature could be different and shade and stuff. Do you feel like the humidity changes whether your balls are hairless? I have a very small tree in a large land of no bush. So I don't know that that would change the weather all that much. So you have a tiny ball sack. I'm all nose, no chin. Like I'm not a Jay Leno. I'm a Pinocchio. And when I lie to girls, it gets bigger. I'm not a puppet. I'm a real boy. So you're so you're David Letterman. Got it. Is that true? Yeah, that David Letterman has a schnoz. He has no chin. Oh, I was just talking about lying to women. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll be right back. Oh, 
everybody was kung fu fighting. Those kids were fast as lightning. In fact, it was a little bit frightening. But they fought with. What the fuck do you want? Dude, the, we're getting ready to do an interview, and you're not here. Yeah. You're not here like yeah. all the fucking times you're not here. Where are you? What, where do you think? Are you what, pooping always again? Been? Always. This is my poop time. Like, I don't care what time we have to announce on the radio. I don't care what Janice says. I don't care if you did your balls. I fucking poop always during the show. This is a normal, normal thing. Get used to it. Well, So what did you eat today? A burrito. Like but I fucking a always. Burrito. Well, I, I tried a new burrito. I went to a different gas station, and they had deep-fried bean and cheese burritos. So all they did is they t- I think they, they just took frozen burritos and dropped them in the deep fryer, and that's what my intestines feel like right now. They're bubbling, and I'm about to, I was about to crap my pants, so I figured, you know, you said David Letterman, and that released my prostate. I'm, I'm so disappointed in, in your innards. Good. I am, too. I just don't even understand how you're how you're sociable. I feel like you have you have some sort IBS of IBS or something. IBS. Is that a thing? Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm B-word intolerant. Oh shit! Our you guest, our that? guest is coming in. Our guest is coming in. Our good, guest is coming in. Good. I hope they hear this. Don't you better not fucking hang up on. Welcome back to the Stain Remover. This is B Word, and once again, no fucking Jake, no Jake in the studio at all. He just avoids me. This is just getting absolute bullshit. I'm actually just getting really tired of Jake avoiding me. But, but my friends, my friends, we have the one and only Janice here. Janice, you are absolutely hot. Can I get your number? Oh, you act like you don't already have my number, B Word. Wow. I don't have your number. I got her number. Fucking sucks. You don't want her number. She sucks. Oh, hey. hey back. Welcome back. Hey. <sighs> well, yeah. I can't believe. I can't believe. I, I. You know what? Fuck you, B-word, for one. Like, you couldn't line up an interview, too. You also leave it to Janice to come up with an interview, and she wants us to interview her herself. Look, I just. Such self over I was just talking with studio. Janice, and you know, like. I like Janice, and I thought that she'd be a good interview, and I just wanted to make sure that maybe we include everybody that's a part of the radio station, and not just you, because you think you're the talent, and you know that's just how it goes. So anyway, so Janice, um, how do you like working for K-Salt Radio? Oh, I love it, especially, you know, I love working with Jake, and you know, and I enjoy working with you too, but you know, I mean, it's, I mean, obviously all about Jake, you know, I don't, I don't know what else to say, but you know, I'm Jake. I know you're feeling some sort of way, but you know, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you came back. I'm I'm not. I wish I could have stayed in the bathroom. Like this smells. This interview smells like bullshit. Like worse than the shit I just let out. Janice, why do you work here? Like beside, I know you said you enjoy working here, but why? Why this station? Why can't you leave and go somewhere else? But why would I go anywhere else? I mean, this place is amazing. You're amazing. 
She likes the rats, Jake. The rats in the studio. She just enjoy the, enjoys those. Uh, these big ass rats. Oh my God! Look, there's one right there. Holy shit! Uh, J- Janice, um, you've you've kind of created some different stuff here at at Salty Hippo Radio that that I appreciate. So, in in our last show, you had us create an ideal woman from AI generated uh, choices. You've obviously had us rank different songs and different things like that. Do you like coming up with these games? Oh, also the game Eat It or Fuck It. I didn't want to forget that one. That was one of my favorite games ever. But that, see, she didn't come up with that. I did. She just read the rules. She did read the rules on that one. I love it when you're right, Jake. Do you like creating games, Janice? Oh, I mean, who doesn't? I'm all about it. I mean, don't you? Don't you, Jake? No. No, I do not. Oh, come on now. Don't be such a stick in the mud. Janice, is there anybody that you would want us to interview? I mean, I don't know. I'm honestly, I'm down for whatever Jake wants. Like honestly, I trust his judgment. I, you know, he's the pro here. So, I mean, we were like, we're friends. Like, I love you like a brother, obviously. Oh, Jesus. So, like, but realistically, like, Jake knows everything. Oh, uh, I got friend zoned. Janice, friend-zoned. how could you friend zone me? But we are friends. I mean, I love this interview. <laughs> Janice, I just bought you lunch like the other day. Like you said that you liked loser. it. Well, of course, yeah, she who likes the, hell the food. Love lunch. I mean, come on. You oh got to eat, God. bro. Hey, Janice, how much would you hey, how much, how long would you have let this keep going? Like how many lunches would be you let B word buy you until this interview happened? <laughs> you fucking loser. I mean, at least three Panera trips, maybe a Starbucks trip too. But I mean, come on. I mean, that's what friends do, right? Oh God, you like Panera and Starbucks? Listen, who the fuck doesn't? Oh, what is what is all right? What's your ideal date, Janice? Well, honestly, it would be going to Starbucks, taking a walk around somewhere where it's like a nice park, um, maybe getting some drinks. I mean, honestly, it just depends. I mean, what do you like, Jake? Anal. I like anal. That escalated. Okay. Um, that's usually like like a third or fourth date, but you were, you were talking first date here. <laughs> Wait. I don't care what. You're going to give that away on a third or fourth date, and I'm out like seven lunches at this point, Janice? What in the absolute fuck? Uh, you've never said anything, B-word. Oh, my God. I mean, I think I made it clear, like, you and you and I are friends. Like, I mean, you're my dude. Like, you know? Look, I bought you, like, flowers the other day, and I, and I set them up on your desk, and I made them look all pretty, and I put a little card on there, and it was, like, thinking of you, and I just thought it was so romantic, and I, I guess I'm just missing out on anal now. I mean, yeah, I appreciated them, but, I mean, carnations... Yeah, yeah, that's my my birth flower, and I thought, oh, that's sweet of him, but like, I didn't see anything else into that. You know what I mean? So, and also too, I was having a bad week, so I thought maybe you're just doing to cheer me up. So, I honestly didn't look anything period. into it. Every week is I a mean, bad week when you host a show with Jake. You're my period, B-word. I'm menstruating right now. Wow, wow. A period don't stop nothing but a sentence, baby girl. That's all I know. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Well, Janice, uh, I, I don't really want to do this interview with you anymore. I thought there was more to our relationship than what there was. <laughs> yeah, I do. You're and such a I loser. just really don't want to do this. This is this is so disappointing. Um, I brought well, you in you here mad? because I you know what? You want to know why I'm mad, Janice? Do you yes. want to know why I'm mad? I bought you a promise ring. I was going to give you a promise ring live on air and tell everybody that you're my girl and now all i do is i hear you hit on jake and talk with him about giving anal and like i can't even get like a rub down she's gonna put her ring on my 11th finger bro a promise ring like what do you think i am fucking mormon come on i i didn't know i mean like i would totally like ask jake to shake the bed if we were soaking Wait, so you're not Mormon? I'm not Mormon, no. But if we were Mormon, I, I would ask you to soak with me. Will Jake be there? 
I need somebody no. to shake the bed. No, I will not be there. I'm not gonna. You can. Uh, you know. You can go one of those quarter motels and put one in and just hope it vibrates for you guys. I'm. I'm not involved in this. I hate both of you now. I want to quit this studio. Fuck K Salt. It's 11:32 in the afternoon and 98 degrees. Good luck with your life. He's so angry. I love it. And I guess that's the end of the interview. So we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Stain Remover. This is B Word, and I am once again in attendance with Jake the Hater. And Hater, I understand that uh, Janice came up with with a game, or did you come up with the game, or how how does the game how's the game here? I don't even know. I'm just sick of her. I'm I'm over all this. I don't care anymore. Yeah, me too. Me too. Now, like like I thought okay. Janice was the real deal. I thought she was. I thought she was the one, bro. Yeah, you loser. Like I just <laughs> You're such a loser. My heart hurts, man. My heart hurts. <laughs> I just I, my wiener hurts. Did you did you do anal during that? Not yet. Uh, Not yet, dude. I just I don't three know. If, I don't know if I want to. I just do need this three anymore. dates. I don't. My heart hurts. Does it count? Bro. Does it count as a date if you don't show up? Like if you make a date, like hey, you want to go on a date, and then she goes and she sits at the restaurant by herself, and you don't show up and you cancel, and then you make another date and you cancel. Like that's two dates, right? Or do you have to actually go to the date? I think for it you to actually count? have to go to the date for it to count. So if I show up and then say I have an emergency, I need to leave. <laughs> yeah, like you're you're you got to go feed your turtle or something. I got a loophole to get in her loophole. Oh, I like that. If only I had a loophole to get in Janice's loophole. But speaking of that, so there's two billionaires that are trying to smack each other around: uh, Big Papa Musk and Zuckerberg. And I feel like the Fuck feud. Zuckerberg really started on the the last the latest stain remover because we were able to interview um the autistic billionaire known as uh elon and uh he he kind of said some words i'm 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 just gonna place them in right here so Corbett can go fuck himself so now they're getting ready to fight and my understanding is is that either you or janice created a game what is this game do you do you have the rules jake it's cage fight Cage fight to the death. That's as much as I know. All right. Well, I don't really want to talk to her, but but Janice, if you're back there, would you tell us what the rules to the game are, please? Basically, you have to choose two celebrities who are going to fight to the death. So that was entertaining. So essentially, B-Word, who, I, I'll ask you this first before we get into the actual fucking game. Who would you rather fight, Big Papa Musk or Fuck Zuck? So Zuckerberg looks to be training, and he's—I he, think he's five eight, five nine, somewhere in there, uh, and he's probably like hundred and fifty pounds soaking wet. So I'm gonna guess that he's probably pretty shifty, like he's probably pretty quick, and I am not pretty quick. So I would venture to say, if I had the opportunity to have one or two punches, I would fight Zuckerberg. If it was a wrestling contest, I'd probably want to want to fight Musk. I don't like Zuckerberg, as we all know. He doesn't like me. Um, so I want to fight him. But but I hope when this happens between them, uh, Elon Musk shows up like at the end of Aliens with a giant robot suit to fight him and just like obliterates him. Plus, also, if, if Elon like gets beat and dies, right, mm-hmm. he's just going to put his brain in something. So we're, there's, we're no worse off, right? It's the same thing. That's true. But, That's true. All right. So. All right, so let's get into Janice's stupid fucking game. Um, who are you having in a celebrity death match in a cage match and why? All right, so let me I, – I don't know what the fight would turn out like, but I would truly want to see Snoop Dogg versus Willie Nelson. 
I just think it would be the battle of weed. The weed. I bowl? think. I think it would be like the the skinny bowl. Like you would have Snoop Dogg, who who ironically is like really good at 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 physical combat. I don't know if you know that, but then you have the old decrepit Willie Nelson that I think could lure him with a really good like stash of weed and it would instantly stop the fight. I would just be curious like how far into the fight we would get to. Yeah, who who wins? Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson? Yeah, cuz once he's it's it's like it's like one of those snake charmers, you know that you see where they where they've got the little flute or whatever and all of a sudden you got this cobra coming up and then next thing you know they like slap the cobra in the head. I think that that's what Willie Nelson would do with his little weed with his little weed flute. Um, I have two. My first one is the Battle of the Brows. I'm having Anthony Davis fight Whoopi Goldberg. Unibrow mm. versus Nobrow. I just mm. want to see that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's as far as I got on that. Is the ref is the ref Eugene Levy? It could be him. Sure. Why? Why is that? The dad from American Pie? Have oh, you, yeah, have you got seen those? Yeah, yeah, dude. He's got the fuzzies. Yeah, he's got caterpillars up there. Yeah, I don't know. I guess yeah. Um, that, that's that's good. I the other one is I want to see Vince McMahon versus Roger Goodell. Oh, that would be good. That would that would be killer, actually. Right. That would be epic. Like it's not like as good. Like I'm not putting Dana White in there against him, right? Like Dana White versus Vince McMahon. But I think because Roger Goodell, I think would like talk a game and then show up. He's like that dad that gets drunk and tries to fight in the stands. And then, like, sees the other dad take his shirt off and then instantly, like, gets into a panic sweat and doesn't know what to do but can't back down. Like, that's how I imagine that fight going. I like, like I really want that to happen. I like it. So could we do Bill Cosby versus R. Kelly? We'll do Predator versus Predator. And and here's here's the caveat. Like, it's not physical combat. It's, like, who can pee on each other the most? I'm down with that. Can the can the rep be? Who is the guy from To Catch a Predator? Oh, uh, Chris, Chris, Chris Hansen. A lot of perverts in Yeah, here. have Chris Hansen be the fucking Chris judge. Chris Hansen. <laughs> I know who you are, Chris Hansen. That would be right, good. If you can bring somebody back from the dead. Like, let's go back in time. Back from the dead. Battle of the Bulge. Let's do John Candy versus Chris Farley. I would like okay. to see who could belly bounce each other in a sumo wrestling fight uh, to the death. And mm-hmm. as far as a ref goes, I want John Belushi to be the ref. That's good. Jerry Springer versus Abe Lincoln. Oh, reason? they both gave people freedom in different ways. <laughs> the freedom to live your life as you are. Wow. I am all about that battle right there. Wow. That's fantastic. Okay. So what about, what about Joan Rivers versus Barbara Walters? Like I think that that would just oh, Joan be, Rivers kicks the shit dude, out of her, Joan dude. Rivers would obliterate Barbara Walters. Who's the Golden Girl? Who's that Betty, oh, White? Betty White? Betty White. Betty White destroys all of them though. Oh, I w- I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, yeah. The Cooch Wars. Cooch Wars. Okay. Is there anybody who you don't think would be a good fight at all? Like you you put this person in a ring and like nobody's gonna buy pay per view tickets at all. Hmm, that's tough. Because I want to say Tom from MySpace, because I think everybody forgot about him. <laughs> like, like he's just still there. Like he could be sitting in the stands before the fight in that stupid pose he had, and still nobody would notice. Yeah, him. Just the and, looking oh, over the left shoulder. Tom, yeah, Tom versus Mike Jones, the rapper. Mike Jones. <laughs> like, because who remembers that? Would that be fuck? like, dude, that would be like 2005 imploded. Right. Yeah. Like nobody cares. That's that's a little interesting. I like that. Um, which presidents would you like to see duke it out? Like any presidents of all time? Like who, who's who's your epic cage match, and then who's the ref? Uh, Nixon versus Woodrow Wilson, just because I like the name. Because you like the name Woodrow Wilson. I just like say Woodrow okay. Wilson. <laughs> okay, Woodrow Wilson. All right, I'm gonna go Andrew Jackson uh, because he has the stigma of being like arguably one of the most racist presidents now i don't i'm not advocating for or against that stigma for him but then i'd want him to fight fdr in a wheelchair because i think that that would be like you know that typical celebrity death match where it's just completely off balance and then i want fdr to win but i think i want jfk to be the ref prior to the Post bullet pre-shot prior okay. to the bullet i, was, I had yeah. to ask i had to ask yeah. but once the three count happens like he explodes in a in a cadillac or something like i just oh, God. dude it would be terrible it'd be terrible 
What um uh who do you want to see um Biden fight? Come on, man. The stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and who and, and see I was going to say, you know who Trump's fighting the legislation. <laughs> The legal system. Yep, Trump's Trump's fighting, dude. Trump and Hillary should have been in a celebrity death match, one hundred percent. Like I realize that that would have been weird. Like it could have been a tag team. Like you could do Melania and Trump versus versus the Clintons. I just think that that eventually, like somebody would have been hung. I would have rather seen them in a dirty dancing scene where he lifts her over his head. Mm, I don't think and anybody wants around. to see Hillary Clinton lifted over anybody's head. I don't care. I thought that would have been great. That would have been great. Well, with that, we're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be right back. Fuck you, Janice. Fuck you, Janice. Oh, that's it, Lord, you're trying to take us in a dead dawn. We live in a world without the sun. My life is a letter. I'm willing to find a way to make up for all the Welcome back into K-Salt Radio, all you salters, salties, saltines out there. Cracker hippos, as we, we should crackers. be. Crackers. Crackers. We like crackers. Well, I like mm-hmm. Favorite kind of cracker, uh, goldfish. I don't care what you were going to say, viewer, but I am. I was going to say I'm proud of you. I'm proud that you're finally coming on board with the fuck Janice train, and not that we're going to fuck her she with the train. Don't heart, be excited, dude. Janice. Janice just broke Good. my heart. Dude, do you, you can bring that up all you want. I bet she's the type of girl that all holes get moist, and it's weird. Oh. Uh, there's nothing good about that. Oh. Anybody so want to speaking of which, best part of the show, the over the line segment. Over the line! The whole world gone crazy! Am I the only one around here who gives a shit about the rules? This week, B word, over the line. I don't know if you know, but uh coming up is the all-star weekend for baseball. Yes. And they are going to Seattle. Yes. Up in my neck of the woods. And I'm excited. I like the home run derby. I think it's one of the only all-star. It's, well, I don't like the game. And the jerseys suck. And the players are voted in. But besides all that shit, um, it's got some of the coolest events, okay? Like the home run derby. Right. And the home run derby. Uh, (laughs) But the city of Seattle put out a request for fans of baseball to come and help clean the city. To get ready like for the, the game. city itself, not just the stadium. The city itself, like around it, like because you got to clean around the hotels and you everything. Got the shanty towns. Stay in to go down there, right? So it reminded me, like you know, when your grandparents were coming over and you were, you know, to your house to stay for the weekend or whatever, and your mom would make you do that, like deep clean to make it look like it's always like that, even though it's not. Is the city of Seattle over the line for asking um, the city itself to help clean up? the the town to cover up its garbage infested area and you know because they're offering free hot dogs to come out for the day uh you couldn't give me enough hot dogs to want to clean that town uh and this this reminds me of that in living color skit with uh is it the bum's name is uh is anton jackson where he ends up taking jim carrey's character who's the um, who's the the newscaster into his tent to introduce him to everything. And and Jim Carrey's supposed to spend the night in the tent. And then he asks in the middle of the night, where's the bathroom? And he shows him that he's got a pickle jar with a shit in it. That's really what this reminds me of, dude. This is not a, uh, this is over the line. To me, this is over the line. There's not enough hot dogs in the world. Uh, there's not enough meth needles that I could pull out of my arm trying to clean out some of these things. Uh, to me, it's over the line, man. Absolutely over the line, no matter how many glizzy globblers you want to give me down my throat, uh, you cannot get me to do it enough for free lemonade in that. 
Um, it just, it just seems tacky. It just seems tacky. It seems like this is why you don't like you vet where they're going and you do it. I understand they might've planned this years ago, but you postpone it, right? You've postponed other events for other major cities and things because of things are bad. When it's that destitute, get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. So the whole city of Seattle, fuck you. You are over the line. And with that, we'll be right back. It's the start of the end. Surrender the throne. The blood on my hands covered the holes. We'd be surrounded by vicious cycles. And with truly alone, the scars are yours to atone. We'd be surrounded. Let them sing. Let them sing. Welcome back to K-Salt Radio. This is B-Word, broken-hearted B-Word as I sit here. Um, Lame-ass B-Word. Here I sit all broken-hearted. Jake tried to shit, but he only farted. And I'm broken-hearted. Oh, my God. Now and, you're trying to be a poet? Yeah, it sucks. But speaking of poetry, let's introduce our Discharge of the Month. Fuzzy Duck! Ducky Fuzz! Duzzy Fuck! Fuck! He- Here's our motherfucking discharge of the month. All right. This might be a topic that's just been beaten like a dead horse. Okay. There were a lot of people talking about the Titan, the Ocean Gate Titan that decided to go to the bottom of the ocean floor to peruse the Titanic. And there's five people in a propane tank operated by an Xbox controller. Each person paid $250,000. All five people died. They were apparently vanquished. They didn't even know what hit them. But would you pay $250,000 for a ride down to the bottom of the ocean? No. It's ridiculous, man. Like, here, here's no. my problem. You have billionaires that spend billions of dollars, millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars on this bullshit. For what? What's the purpose? Like, is there is there is there a purpose? Like, are you going to get a little extra puss because you did this? Like, like what exactly is the motivation here, hater? You have the money to do it, so fuck everybody else. I just don't understand seeing a broken ship, like at the bottom. Like, like they have video of it. Like, you're not seeing it. Like, it's not like you're touching it. Like, you're going to see it out of a tiny porthole. Like, what is the point? Like, I hate these people. I hate anybody who wants to like see things that don't matter. It'd be like spending a million dollars to fly around the moon. Like, you're not going to the moon. You're not on the moon. You're not touching the moon. Like, you're just near it, and you could die like Apollo 13. And my discharge of the month are these fucking billionaire fucks, these people who decide to spend a million dollars to touch space in a jet or $250,000 to go to the bottom of the ocean to see where Jack could have fit on the fucking door. There's a problem here, Jake. There's a problem here. I feel like if you had enough money, if you had fuck you money, you would make these decisions. You would buy something you don't need in this fashion. I just don't know what it is, and I'm happy it's not Ocean Gate because fuck these rich people. I'm sorry they died, but I'm not sorry that it was funny. The memes to it were fucking epic, but these guys are my discharge of the month. I can wholeheartedly agree, (laughs) B-Word. And that is our discharge of the month. Well, Jake, this uh, this so I was told that this was the pubic version of the stain remover, the pubic version, pubic version, pubic, pubic version. The pubic equals the angle of the dangle. Or you gave me a, a, a note on my desk that said the pubic version of the stain remover is available to all of the Bleach Bros people, and I don't yes. know what that means. Pubic. What is the pubic version? We love pubic virgins when you bleach your pubes. 
but that means it's free for everybody. God damn it. Free your your handwriting is so fucking terrible. This says the public version. You sloppy son of a bitch. This is the public version what I wrote. of the Stain Rover, <laughs> specifically for the Bleach Bros audience. In this episode, you got a little bit of a taste of Jake and, Jake and me doing the Hippo Happy Hour. You also got a little bit of an intro into what the Stain Rover looks like. We obviously now interviewed spend Janice. seven dollars. Seven dollars. Seven dollars. You get this every single month. We really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this. And with that, everybody, this is the Stain Rover. Bleach Bros Podcast is proud to align itself with Jerky Pro, a beef jerky manufacturer established by military and paramilitary veterans. Available in three ounce or one pound bags with great flavors such as honey glazed, teriyaki, red hot, apple cinnamon, original, peppered, sweet barbecue, and if you're ballsy enough, nuclear. Be sure to use our promo code to get some of the best jerky on the market. Use Bleach Bros 5, all lowercase, to take advantage of this offer today. Hey everyone, it's Gnome, your favorite metal-loving midget. Do you love music? How about heavy music with some nice gutter rolls and amazing breakdowns? Look no further. Come join Jake the Hater and myself for your bi-weekly heavy music content. We bring you our newest singles and album recommendations. We are also bringing you new artists you may have never heard before. We are now streaming with a new RSS feed on Spreaker Prime. Come subscribe, like, and review. Also check out our link tree for all our socials, feeds, and of course our very own Spotify playlist. Horns up and stay heavy. Sometimes people have a story to tell. It could be a story of triumph or a story of sorrow. However, it's their story. It's important to keep their story authentic, in their own words, and delivered in a delicate way. That's where Unfiltered Discussions podcast comes in. I'm Brian Howard. I talk with my guests about tough subjects and pivotal moments. I'd love for you to hear their stories. Subscribe to Unfiltered Discussions on your favorite podcast platform. Let's ensure their stories are heard. Thank you.